the stock market's dying, is it a good time to buy stocks? Or is it a bad time? Or should I just sit on the side and wait? Or should I, you know, just not invest at all? Hey guys, my name is Jordan and welcome to my channel. So uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about investing 101. So this is not a video um, if you are an expert uh, because uh, this will be knowledge that you have already known. But this is uh, knowledge I'm going to share with you that I have learned throughout my journey of investing. And by no means, this is financial advice. Um, treat it as entertainment while you're in a lockdown, while you're in a circuit breaker. Um, depending on which part of the world you are. If this is the first time you're watching this video or maybe this channel, consider hitting the like button or sharing it or on turning on the notification so every time a new video comes up, you guys are notified. All right, so let's talk about the current situation that we're in right now. It's a very unique situation because 10 years ago when we had a recession, I was just a little boy. Uh, but 10 years now, we have learned a lot of things through the last 10 years. We have been exposed to different things. Technology has changed for the last 10 years, you know. I think 10 years ago, we probably had like mobile phones that were not even this big, you know. It's like tiny little phones. Maybe even without a screen, just a, you know, fix a little screen as well. So, with all that said and done, let's get started. Alright, so first things first. Number one, what should you do even before you start investing? Uh, what do you need to know and what do you have to have before you can even start investing? Most people will tell you to read up the news, read the financials, blah, 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 blah. So those are important. Uh, I'm not saying those are not, but those are really important. But to be able to buy a stock, uh, what you need is actually to have a brokerage account. If you have no idea what a brokerage is, um, these are the guys that that um, have a platform or a service to you that it allows that they help you to buy stocks. Um, you, know, you could just fund the account. Uh, the money goes in. You can use the app. Uh, like like me, I use. Um, I just switched over from interactive brokers to Tiger brokers. Um, you know the fees are still low, uh, and it gives you a lot of analytics about things that you can read. And I'll put it on the screen on this side so that you guys can take a look as well. So um, there are many, many different kind of brokerages. So like, for example, in Singapore, we have, we have Standard Chartered, Kim Eng, UOB, KHN, Lim and Tan, Philip Security. So the difference between these brokers are actually the fees that they charge. Uh, brokers charge an average of $10 to $25 at, as a minimum fee. So um, how you calculate that is, for example, if the trading fee is 0.125% and you were to buy some shares, you have to take whatever amount you're spending, multiplied by 0.125%. And if it's greater than $10, they will take $10, they will take that amount. But if it's below $10, they will take $10 as the minimum sum. So that is something important that you might need to take note of depending on the kind of trader you are. So if you're trying to build a dividend portfolio of stocks you're gonna hold for a long period of time. Um, you know, this might not apply to you a lot because your frequency of trades are not as frequent as people who are just going in off the market, buying out, selling, going in, going out of the market. So if you are doing trades like that, you want to reduce the trading fee and commissions so that you get a lot more profit from whatever you're buying and selling. Alright, so we're going to talk about uh, the different kind of stocks that's available in the market. So there are four main kinds. Uh, we have the dividend stocks. These are the stocks that actually pays you a small amount of money because they make a profit throughout the year. And these companies can either pay you every single year, every six months, or every quarter. So it depends on the kind of stocks that you buy. Every stock pays differently. Um, so what we, what we look at for dividend stocks are actually dividend yields and also uh, the dividend safety score. Whenever a company makes money, they split the profit with their shareholders. Some company pays more, some companies pays less. So when a company pays you, um, let's say company A, um, you know, their stock's about 100 bucks, and they pay you a $2 dividend every single year, this means that their dividend yield is at 2% payout ratio. And that is where you can see how much um, of their profit they're taking to pay out these shareholders. What you want to look out for is companies that are 
paying up too much when you are paying like 80 to 90 percent of their profit to shareholders um, this could mean that in the future they might have a, a dividend cut because um, it's not sustainable in the long term to pay 90 percent of your profits um, to all your shareholders uh, because if you are paying so much profits to shareholders you do not have money to reinvest into the business and growing it as well so a good number to look at is probably 30 to 50 percent of payout ratio i think that is a pretty good number all right so the next category of stock is pretty interesting these are called growth stocks so these are the kind of stocks that might or might not pay you um, dividend but they belong to a category of stocks where you're looking for capital appreciation so there are two different kinds of people in the market some of them go for capital appreciation where you buy a stock at $10, hoping to sell it at $15. Uh, and then there's another group of people who don't mind buying it at $10 and taking 10 cents every single year. Why not? Because it's passive income. And you don't have to time the market in a way. By the way, you cannot time the market. It's the time you have been in the market that matters. Yep. So growth stocks are stocks that you can look at. Um, usually they belong in, to the tech industry. Um, these are like Apple, um, Tencent, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. These are the kind of stocks um, that are classified as growth stocks. Uh, so if you're the kind of guy or you're, you're the kind of person that, that enjoys that, that ups and downs of the market and you really believe in tech and tech is something that you can see it's going to help the world in many ways. This is, this is the kind of stocks you're going to look out for. Alright, so the next kind of stocks that we have is actually called IPO. So these are the kind of companies that are newly listed into the market or into the exchange. Um, and you can actually buy that. Why not? It's a new it's a new company that's coming up, or probably a company that's been around for a long time and they decided to go public. So these are the stocks that are called IPOs or new issues. So IPO stands for initial public offering. So uh, I think one of the one of the ones that I saw um, I didn't participate in it, but uh, I saw it back then and it, and it left me an impression because it was a China company called Xiaomi and they do mobile phones, you know, they're like the budget smartphone. So we have defensive stock mix and these are the kind of stocks that, or that do not go up in you know, a huge spike, unlike Tesla, it goes like uh, They usually have a very slow growth and they do pretty all right during bad times in a crisis like this. Um, they also do all right when it's in, in a good time as well. So some industries that fall under the category of defensive stock um, include healthcare, your pharmaceuticals, your FMCGs, um, and some of the stocks that I just bought um, through Tiger Brokers is actually uh, Johnson and Johnson. So these are these guys. They make things from pharmaceuticals to orthopedics. I, I think they're pretty big and as babies. You know, when you're young little kids, um, our parents always buy those bottles of Johnson & Johnson's baby wash. Alright, so we've got our brokerage account set up and then um, we also know the different kind of stocks that's available in the market. And right now you must be wondering, hmm, what kind of stock should I buy? So that's where your homework comes in and you have to actually read and understand what the business do. Uh, there are different kind of analysis method that people use out there they have technical analysis they have fundamental analysis they have some charting everyone's using a different method one of the ways that actually buy a stock or decide what stock to get is actually to read up a lot about the company understand what they do how are their financials like and then i make an informed decision on whether this is something i will want to have in my portfolio so the general rule of thumb is to not put all your eggs in one basket just ensure that your portfolio is a little bit diversified uh, but the, and also not over diversified where you're spread too thin across too many industries as well all right so we talk about the type of stocks that's available in the market the type of brokers that are available let me know in the description down below which kind of stocks are your favorite are you the one that goes for the growth stocks the dividend stocks the defensive stock or are you the IPO guy, the new, the new kid on the block? Leave your comments down below. And if you're looking for a broker, uh, do consider Tiger Brokers. They are giving you a free stock with your sign up and when you fund your account, um, they will give you a stock within the next 10 days. I'll leave the link in the description down below. By using my link, you get a free stock, I get a free stock, everybody gets a stock. And I'll see you next time.